Hey gang, it's Maria here from GoalieTrainingPro.com and welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV episode number four. Um, today, so we are doing this uh, bottoms up thing. <laughs> Last week we started with the foot and we talked about all the little bones and ah, oh, I forgot my tea in the office. Oh well. I'll make it. <laughs> uh, we talked about all the bones in the foot and how they can be finicky and strengthening the muscles in our feet and how important our feet are because they're the interface between our our skate and the ice and uh, or our body and our skate and our skate and the ice. So in case you missed it, it's episode three. It will be uh, somewhere down there in the, in the feet or you can uh, catch it on Goalie Training Pro TV on YouTube. So, no problem. Um, today we're talking about the ankle. And next week, we are going to talk about the knee. So you don't want to miss that one because um, your knees take a beating because of certain things that you do and certain th areas that you, you're not mobile in certain areas. So then the knee takes up the slack and it causes um, a lot of wear and tear. The week after that, we're going to be talking about the neck, which I know is not really bottoms up because we're kind of like skipping like your hips and your pelvis and your back and your thoracic spine and your shoulders. <laughs> we're just going straight to your neck. But I really want to share this with you because it's, and I don't usually say like cutting edge, new, you know, but this actually is cutting edge. You've seen, I piloted it um, probably two summers ago with our hockey players and our alpine ski racers, but um, it's called the Top Spin 360. It looks like this. So it's essentially right now, it's a football helmet that you smash on and you do up. And then uh, you get this thing spinning around come saw I'll show you more later but um, it works sort of the deep muscles in your neck uh, and this has implications how's my hair look <laughs> this has implications for concussion uh, we, d we don't say concussion prevention just like we don't say ACL injury prevention we say reduction because some you know if, if you get a knee smash off the side of your head chances are pretty good you're gonna get concussion we can't really train you out of that but so that's in a couple couple not next week we'll talk the knee the week after we'll talk um neck stabilization i want to remind you this episode is brought to you by priceblocks.com uh this if you know um goalie coach mike valley fantastic guy super smart amazing coach but this is one of the things he started because he had the same problem it's like how do people know when I have time available, like in my town, and how much my rates are, and how, how can I make it so that it's easy for people to find me, to book me, to pay for me, and have a lesson, rather than you're gonna call, what time do you have? You know, and maybe if it's like, you know, you guys I'm sure are the same as me, somebody calls, but I'm coaching somebody, so then I have to call them back. So they call and leave a message, hey, what, I wanna come in for a session, what time do you have available? I call them back, they're busy. Uh, okay, I got Tuesday at four, you know, Wednesday at 3.30, okay. Then they call back, I'll take Tuesday at four. Oh, you know what, I filled Tuesday at four, <laughs> you know, and so this way it's just, they can go to one place online. Okay, you've got an opening here. As soon as they book, that comes off your schedule so somebody can't double book. They pay right there and you're all set. So anyway, price blocked. The other thing you wanna check out on there is they just announced it yesterday, so I can share this with you. The Network Goaltending Symposium is going to be in Nashville this year. It's been in Madison, Wisconsin uh, the last three years. They're moving it to Nashville this year. It will be June 1st to 3rd. This is, this is the one, you've seen my videos, um, where like Thomas Magnuson, Mike Valley, Justin Goldman, um, David Alexander, um, Henu Nyquist, uh, Pasco Valenta, <laughs> um, Rob Tallis, like, it's basically a who's who of goalie coaching. So like some of those names that you're like, who is that? Like the head of Swedish goaltending development, former head of Finnish goaltending development, now head of um, um, Red Bull, uh, Salzburg Red Bull um, Sports Academy goaltending like and and the nicest people like you would just you will t anybody you'll talk to anybody and they'll just spend so much time with you and help you out so 
This year, they're going to be NHL goalies. There's going to be an on-ice component this year. Plus, as I mentioned, it's in Nashville. <laughs> so, uh, I yeah, I'll be there 100%. Um, and you should probably put it on your calendar. If you're a goalie coach who's looking for more, better ways to help your goalies win more games, um, then you should be there too. It's, it's cheap as anything in terms of what conferences go for. It's, I keep telling them you guys should double your price, but they won't because they want it to be accessible for everyone, which is awesome. So, they, so that info is on priceblocks.com as well. It's a network goaltending symposium. Um, okay, let's talk ankle stuff. So we have a few different planes of motion. Actually, I'll step over here. Um, so there are a couple different planes of motion. So one is um, dorsiflexion, which is basically this, this motion. So when I make this angle smaller, that is dorsiflexion. And then there's plantar flexion, which is when I go up on my tiptoes. And then there is inversion, when I turn the sole of my foot up. And there is eversion, when I turn the sole of my foot out. So those are gonna um, come, come into play as we go through to the anatomy of the ankle. It's, it's, it gives us quite a bit of mobility, especially in um, plantar flexion and in, inversion and, and for some of us dorsiflexion, not so much in eversion, which is, which is probably a good thing. Um, but it's also pretty durable and you look at how much abuse that thing takes and the things we do to it and twist and turn and you know it's not like it's not this big it's not like a big knuckle it, it's it's pretty compact so it's an amazing um, device and we should look after it because it's because if you've ever sprained your ankle or had something wrong with your ankle you know <laughs> how limiting that's going to be on you so um, if we look at just gonna I make notes for these because I'm it's a little bit serious so I want to make sure I cover everything okay so we'll go over um, a little bit the anatomy of the ankle and then we'll come back to it as we talk about injuries but I want you to sort of get the lay of the land so this picture here we're talking about kind of the inside part of our foot so here's our this would be our big toe we're looking at. This is our ankle bone, um, which is actually gonna be the medial malleolus of the, that's from the tibia of your big shin bone. And then this main ligament on the inside, and it doesn't really look exactly like that. It has parts, but it's a deltoid ligament and it, it's pretty like rock solid. So that's part of the reason. Part of it's the bony anatomy um, that you don't, doesn't really let you roll because you're gonna smash into your lateral malleolus um, before you kind of get over there. But also your deltoid ligament is pretty strong. So it keeps you from rolling your ankle where your bottom of your foot rolls away from you. Which most of you are probably like, yeah, I haven't really done that. It's still possible, it can happen, but it's not kind of thing like, oh, I was just walking along and stepped in a little hole and, you know, everted my ankle. Then if we look over here, let me see where I can, yeah, this is better. So this is the outside of your foot. And this is where normally when you sprain your ankle, you roll your ankle in. This is called an inversion sprain. And these are um, talofibular ligaments. There's sort of an anterior, a medial, and a posterior. But this anterior talofibular ligament is the one that usually goes first. Um, and it and it's the most vulnerable position for your ankles when your toes are pointed down a little bit and you roll your ankle. That one's going to snap. to work on my snapping that wasn't very good the middle picture I'm going to come back to in a second so um, if we look at performance wise I'll pop back out here so if we look at performance wise obviously you want to have strong stable ankles but one of the things that I see a lot of goalies lacking actually a lot of our athletes in general lacking is this active dorsiflexion they get stuck kind of in this position and I'm not exactly sure why if it's just that they're not using the range um, and so they get stiff or yeah I don't know what explains it but you need to have that dorsiflexion so that you can get sort of balanced in your stance so that you know you can you can get those knees a little bit forward have your shoulders over your feet tilted forward from your torso so that you're 
appearing nice and big in the net and big to the puck, but without being folded. So if I can't get this position, kind of get deep in my ankles, if I get stuck here, well then my bum hat can still go back, but then look how much my chest has to come down to hold that position, because I just can't, you know, I can't fold my back in half and get that chest up. So if I just come here, see how that lets me be taller in the net and just in a better position all around to move. So dorsiflexion is really important and people don't realize how much they lack in dorsiflexion. And we, we measure it when we do our base assessments, but you know, you don't very often get someone, everybody emails, I want to stretch my groin, I want to get bigger splits, I want, nobody has ever emailed me in the history of doing this uh, for over 50 years, no one's ever emailed me like, I think I need more active dorsiflexion, how would I get that? So, <laughs> so pay attention to your dorsiflexion. Um, it also helps you get a good, you know, a good pushing angle, so you have a nice, you know, good strong push position. Again, if I'm kind of stuck here, it's not as strong a position to push from, or even if I'm in my butterfly and I come up, you can see how I need that ankle dorsiflexion to load it up. If I don't have that dorsiflexion, you know, I have to bring my knee up a little higher to get that clearance. And then again, I'm kind of pushing from here, which isn't quite as strong a position to use my hip and my quad together to push. So it's important. Um, and then as well, off the ice, if you lack dorsiflexion, um, it can mess up how you squat, how you run. We see a lot of um, athletes in the gym, they can't dorsiflex, so what they do is they bring their knees inside. Because if you look from the side, so if I track straight over my middle toe, there's my active dorsiflexion. If I cheat and bring my knee inside, I can get a little further. So we'll see, um, you know, athletes squatting and they'll, they'll bring their, their knees inside. And it's not, a lot of times that's a hip thing. Most times it's a hip thing. But sometimes when we get down to the root of it, it's actually, they lack the dorsiflexion. So that's how they cheat. And we'll also see that medial arch just completely flatten down as they go. So yeah, we have to fix that because it's a, the whole system is a bottom up system. So we need to fix that so that you know, we're driving proper movement all the way up the chain. Otherwise, we're just building a compensation, 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 you know, all the way up the chain and creating a problem. Um, bu -bu so yeah, so, and really like, I don't want you to think of this in terms of, oh, okay, well then I need an ankle program because your good training program should include things that are gonna look after your ankles and, and make them strong and stable and mobile anyway. Um, so here's a test if, you know, to see if you're sort of covering your bases. You should be able to balance on one foot and close both your eyes and not, you know, fall over and take out your china cabinet or anything like that. You should be able to lunge in all four directions and come back up to balance. So if I come up here, boom, stick that balance for about three seconds, um, come out to the side, stick that balance, come straight back, stick the balance again for about three seconds, cross under, come up and stick the balance. And ideally, you know, like without, you know, wiggling all over, it should be pretty familiar. So that the feedback that your, your, um, brain is getting from the proprioceptors in your ankle, it's working with your hips and your knees, and you're finding that perfect point of balance. And the last one that you could use for a little test is, you should be able to ankle bounce. So this is one where we just come up on our toes and bounce nice and relaxed, but our heels come down and just lightly kiss the ground. Uh, so it's not heavy, it's just light, 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 but getting all the way up and all the way down, you should be able to do that for 30 seconds and, and sort of find that rhythm because we want those, those joints to have some smarts too. We don't want them just to be, you know, like Frankenstein, sort of strong but dumb. <laughs> so if we look at some prehab exercises that we can do to help you look after, look after your ankles, um, we do just active dorsiflexion. So um, again, with my heel on the ground, making sure my heel and my middle toe are in line pointing straight ahead and my heel stays on the ground, I'm just going to bring that knee forward and back. So this tricks people because people say, oh, I don't really feel it. 
because you're expecting to feel a stretch in your calf and this isn't a calf stretch it's a active mobilization and you should just feel a little tension here in the sort of the lower third in the back just right around your Achilles so it's just here a little pause a little pause and we'll do about 15 on each side then we also sometimes do what I call an FRC Dors active dorsiflexion because it's based on some of the stuff I learned from Dr. Andreo Spina but um, you know we'll just come in here to start with and work on you know driving this knee forward cutting this ankle down, angle down to get in that nice deep dorsiflexion but then we'll also come out wide and get sort of an active inversion so keeping my foot flat getting that active inversion and then I can come underneath as well and get an active eversion but also look at what's going on at my hip as I do all these movements so here I'm in adduction and external rotation here I'm in nice extension here I'm in some abduction so that's kind of a nice one too and we just kind of flow around that and kind of work those positions I can even get in here and mobilize back and forth a little bit um, we'll do ankle bouncing so it's a good one to sort of get those muscles um, firing and learning to sort of fire in a controlled and rhythmic manner um, tiptoe walking we'll use in just our dynamic warm-up so tiptoe walking and then heel walking as well so those are a few things we can work on I mean when we have an athlete that gets we usually don't do a lot of inversion eversion specific isolation work unless there's been an injury um, in the past or it's a specific area that we've identified as being problematic but if we were to do that we would just this is just like a pretty light resistance band I'm going to put my other foot underneath because I don't want my heel scraping along the ground. But my knee has to stay still. And then I'm going to invert and control it back. My foot's in a nice relaxed position, so I'm not pulling my toes up. I'm not pointing them. And you'll notice as I come back, there's a little bit of a cogwheel there. Like it kind of goes uh, 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 coming back. That's okay. It's just, you know, my muscles aren't used to kind of working in isolation like that so nice and controlled getting that going and then I would switch around to the other foot and do the other way out to the side coming back down again making sure that knee isn't rolling back and forth because a lot of you want to use your hip to work on that rather than the muscles in your lower leg another one that we sometimes do um, is you'll get in Get in here with the lacrosse ball if you're really having some trouble getting it. And we just kind of push in there and kind of turn around. Just again, it's just a different kind of self myofascial release just to try and work on that a little bit. Now, let's say you start working on your active dorsiflexion and every time you come forward into that position, instead of feeling that little tightness in the back, you feel a pinch or a block in the front so that suggests that there's sort of a bony block at the front of the joint and that's what's limiting your active dorsiflexion or your dorsiflexion in general that will probably need to be mobilized um, so that by a physiotherapist or a massage therapist somebody who knows how to mobilize joints because again when we looked at those bones in the foot and the ankle last week one of those is it's probably stuck and you're not going to be able to stretch it you're actually just mashing on it and maybe make it irritated so they'll do a little mobilization and again it should be like yeah you know that got it and then away you go so again don't ignore it it's not something that's like you know if your hips were so tight that you had no butterfly you'd right away be looking to get it looked at this dorsiflexion is kind of like huh you know that's weird but it really has that much of an impact all the way up the chain that you shouldn't just be ignoring it so let's head back over here and talk about some injuries again so we already talked about the inversion sprain uh, usually it'll be your ATFL that get, goes first then this one 
than maybe that one. So these are ligaments, they join bone to bone. Deltoid ligament, eversion sprain, not that common. We're good. Now we're gonna talk about, hello. Now we're gonna talk about uh, the high ankle sprain. So when I, was a, when I was a girl back in university, we called this a syndesmosis sprain, but now it's called a high ankle sprain. And um, it's a funny injury. It's, the mechanism is a little bit funny, and some of you will be like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I'm gonna show you over here. So a syndesmosis sprain is a rotational injury. So um, here's, you know, your ankle's sort of a mortise and tendon joint. So when the, when the foot spins under the leg or the leg spins on top of the foot, it kind of spreads those bones. I'll show you better in the picture, but it's a rotational um, injury. So my lower leg rotates in and my foot rotates out. And that springs this syndesmosis joint or this uh, joint between the tibia and the fibula. So this is the syndesmosis. So if you picture this spinning, it spreads these two bones apart and puts a strain on that syndesmosis. Let's do one thing first. This is called the tibia. This is called the fibula. So they are not the same word, one with a F and one with a T. This is not called the fibia. It's the fibula. This is called the tibia. Because it drives me crazy when people are like, oh, his fibia is broken or whatever. <laughs> um, okay, we're good, <laughs> we'll keep going. So, uh, so this is the syndesmosis. But then there's also this interosseous membrane. That's just a connective tissue membrane um, that goes between sort of knits between these two bones. Like, let's think about this for a second. Like picture your lower leg and that the bones that make up your ankle like are two different bones that are just connected by like um, ligaments. You know, they're like it's not like a solid thing. They're two different bones, it's crazy. So anyway, this thing gets sprung and that uh, that creates a problem because there aren't muscles that we can work on. Oh, well, let's just strengthen the muscles that hold the fibula and the tibia together. Well, there aren't any. Um, those were left out for whatever reason. <laughs> so it really is, uh, you gotta have to give it time, which is why these injuries are so frustrating. And sometimes too, they'll feel very, just fine. Like walking around, it'll feel great. And people think, oh, that like high ankle sprain, no problem, man. I, Mine, I feel better already, I'm gonna get back on the ice. And then they get back on the ice and start rotating or you know, stop or a crossover. And they, that pain comes back and they think, oh man, it was, all, it was so much better and now I've, now I've irritated it again. Well, probably it didn't really irritate it again. It probably just wasn't ready for that action. Now, if you suspect that you have a high ankle sprain, this is a, um, one of the things we can do. Oh, I meant to get tape, hmm. Give me a second. Let me see if I have some tape. Tape, tape, tape. Well, I don't have tape, but I'll show you with a little bungee. We'll step out here. So if you think you might have a high ankle sprain or a syndesmosis sprain, um, this is what we do sometimes to sort of see if that's maybe what it is. And we can even use it when you're get, not so that you can play when you just sprained it like two days ago. But when you're getting back to the stage, we can do this to give it a little bit more support. But we'll take just athletic tape, just your normal white athletic tape, and we'll come just above, just above the ankle bones, but low, not, you know, not up here, low, but just above the ankle bones. And we'll put on like really tight, um, go around like a couple times, quite tight, like not, but, but tighter than you would tape an ankle. Cause you're not gonna leave this on for long. You're just gonna put it on and then, you know, and then go through some motion. So before you tape it, you'll kind of get a feel. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty sore when I just do it like that. Then we'll tape it up and then it's like, oh, actually 
that feels a lot better than, you know, <laughs> the good news is we know what's wrong with you. The bad news is um, it's probably a syndesmosis sprain. So, and that's just a little thing you can try. Don't use that, to, you know, as your sole diagnosis and be like, oh, it, yeah, it made it feel better. It's syndesmosis sprain because, you know, who knows? Actually, sometimes even when you do a inversion sprain, sometimes a um, couple of things can happen, but sometimes these ligaments can pull off a little chunk of bone. Uh, sometimes actually you can even pull off um, the base of the fifth metatarsal, a little chunk will come off. So again, you know, and it depends where you're feeling your pain and your swelling and things like that, but still get it checked out. Um, I just want you to understand what the different things are and just some ways you can kind of test and see what might get, be going on. So high ankle sprain for you guys, you know, picture your, uh, maybe you're in a reverse VH and somebody falls on your leg and it, you know, torques your, or even just really going in the position hard and torques your lower leg in while your boots on the ice. That could give you one, um, skate getting caught in a rut, kind of spinning you. That can give you one, um, yeah, time to heal. That's, that's it. And you can still work on the inversion, the eversion, the balance, getting your balance back, your proprioception, but it's, it's just going to take its time to heal. So that is the ankle. That is your bottoms up uh, <laughs> goalie training pro TV this week. Next week, we're going to talk about the knee. So that's when, well, I mean, you all know about your ankle too, but the knee is a really important one. Um, see a lot of guys chew up their knees by just not quite doing the right things on or off the ice um, and then we're going to talk about the neck after that we're going to talk about the top spin and how we can reduce the severity or maybe the even the incidence of concussions so that's going to be a big thing uh, otherwise off to california on monday just for a day so just i'll fly in monday i'll come home wednesday i have meetings all day tuesday um i've never flown into lax so that will be a fun experience and uh yeah, and then I'll be home for a little bit before I go to uh, New York City to meet up with those NHL strength coaches in December. So that's all that's new. Hey, oh, yeah, this is important. Those of you in the States, um, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Also, I am going to be doing a Black Friday sale. So if you've been waiting to get Ultimate Goalie Training 3.0, Rapid Response Goalie Training 2.0, In-Season Goalie Solution, uh, Puck Battle Domination, which is the youth training program, <laughs> We're gonna have a coupon, <laughs> but don't tell the secret. Secret, mom's the word. Okay, have a good one. Eat lots of eat lots of um, turkey and get like one like a humongous spoonful of stuffing for me and just like put it right in your face. I love stuffing. Have a good one. Cheers.